Hi, Chris. Um, I've had to do this three times because each time I do it, each time I do this video, I get triggered by the amount of ignorance in your statements. So I'm going to do a short version that hopefully will be accepted by Twitter, given that the limitations are two and a half minutes. Um, so we'll fire off these very quickly. How many white people are enough is what you ask. All of them. Every single white person living in South Africa, enjoying the um, advantages of being a white person in South Africa, all the way from the fact that I have to speak English and I know about no tetis cross. Those kind of uh, advantages, the fact that FNB charges me 5% more or whatever, charges me more on interest because I have more melanin than you. The fact that our living arrangements normalize the fact that I have to live in a township and you don't. The fact that your domestic is almost always black, washing your underpants. The fact that you've normalized to all that speaks of the advantages you live under. That's the kinds of racisms that we're talking about. We're not talking about your bri. And for you to, to, to reduce what Danny Kay is saying to popularism, you think he's doing this for likes? What he's pointing out is absolute fact. White people seem the most... <laughs> most white people seem entirely ignorant of the amounts of racism that, that exist out there. It is not normal for black people to be standing in the sun or in the rain waiting for transport to shuttle them all the way back to uh, some township outside of your pristine suburbia. That's not normal. By the way, you confuse racism and, and prejudice. Um, and if you don't know the difference, well, then the, the, the problems are more than I had thought. Social cohesion. <laughs> Social cohesion has been tried several times. It was tried by Mandela and his, um, uh, his, his government. It was tried by Mbegi and his government. The fact that Zuma was supported is because people were sick and tired of Kumbaya. I'll tell you what we do agree on, you and I, Chris. Racism is institutionalized. You see it all over the place, or you should be seeing it all over the place. Clearly, you don't see it all over the place. Institutionalization means I speak English when I want to speak closer. Institutionalization means that my skin color increases the predisposition to poverty, increases my disposition to, being, uh, to living in slum areas called townships, and I have to work from that. Institutionalization means that my history is a 500-year history of being brutalized by people despite my forefathers repeatedly trying to make peace and say, look, we can live in social cohesion and kumbaya. After 500 years, I'm sorry, we simply don't believe. We don't believe as a, as a people. And uh, we have no reason to believe that white people are capable of it. There is currently no historical proof I'm aware of where, you've, where white people have gone into a country and lived in social cohesion with the natives. Um, I'm open to being corrected here. If anyone can think of an example where white people have moved into an area, historically, moved into an area and lived at peace with those people and not butchered them, enslaved them or the like, please give me an example because it's scary to me. The more I speak it, the scarier it, it, it becomes. You're right, South Africa should find a different approach. We've tried the Kumbaya. We've tried it repeatedly, and it's kicked black people. And when I say black people, I also mean what you call colored people, because actually, they're black. That you've separated like the, separated us like that, by the way, is a whole other video. South Africa does need to do things differently. We have to. What you call social cohesion is basically us legitimizing the things that you've stolen. That's not social cohesion. That's legitimizing the things you've stolen over 500 years. So what I suspect you're battling with, Chris, is the overwhelming, real, for, the overwhelming feelings when you realize the damage done by your forebears. And so the knee-jerk reaction is to go, it's not my fault, I wasn't there. 
that's unacceptable. And it's unacceptable because, in essence, it was being done for you. Whether you did it or not, it was done for you. It was done so that if you are white living in South Africa, in America, anywhere else in the world, you would gain a very, very big advantage. People were killed for you. So if you believe in the kumbaya that you're talking about, the social cohesion, then there's certain things you need to take on board. While it's not your fault, it's your responsibility. And what Danny Kay is pointing out correctly is that white people need to start standing up and realizing that they need to take responsibility for the things that were done for them. Take responsibility in order to create some kind of equity. Now, if you don't want to take responsibility, but you still want to enjoy the benefits of, of butchering people and colonialism and all these other things, then yes, you do have to take on some of that, uh, of that fault too. In order to shed the fault, because it is a heavy fault, and that's what most white South Africans seem to be battling with, you need to get up off your ass and start taking responsibility. Start asking the questions, what can I do? Gathering around the bri and, and reinforcing each other's lack of guilt, sorry, that's not going to cut it. It's not your fault. You're correct. But it is your responsibility. And part of that includes then admitting that, look, we have gained a hell of a lot from it from colonialism and apartheid and all these other things by any other name.